Hi, hello. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, we still have a few people joining, I can see. So um, we'll let you continue to join while we um, start the um, kind of welcome and introduction to today's webinar, which is about um, how to migrate from VMware to Virtuoso with confidence. Um, my name's Steve Fenton. I'm part of the Virtuoso marketing team. I'm really happy to be here with um, Denis Volkov, who is our Senior Director of Customer Solutions and Success. So Denis leads a wide range of Virtuoso services teams to help customers um, make their cloud projects successful. Um, a couple of other members of Denis's team are here with us as well. So plenty of expertise here um, to help answer your questions. Um, Today, we're going to obviously do a little bit of introduction to today's topic, a little bit about Virtuoso for anybody that's relatively new to us as a company and our solution. Um, of course, then we're going to focus on VMware migration challenges, strategies, how we help you deal with VMware migration, provide some customer examples and give you some um, links and information to help you uh, move on with your project. Um, we are recording this session, so we'll send the recording afterwards. Um, to everybody that attended um, and we will try to leave time in the next 30 40 minutes or so for a q a so please do ask your questions um, you can do that using the tools in zoom and um yeah dennis do you want to say hi before i kick off yeah absolutely hi everyone uh well i hope this will be helpful and useful to you we have a uh, plenty of information to share and uh, yeah let's let's take off i think right let's get going um, so, yeah, as I said, let's, for anybody that's that, that's relatively new to Virtuoso, this is going to be a super quick overview of, of us as a company and what we do. So Virtuoso is a software company. We provide software and services surrounding that software um, to enable different kinds of as a service uh, cloud, um, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, uh, anything as a service. Collectively, the, the, the solution we offer and the services around it are what give you that alternative to not just the VMware, but to hyperscale public cloud, to numerous kind of legacy cloud platforms, um, and to kind of the classic do-it-yourself approach to cloud as well. And why is it an alternative? Well, it's because it's faster to deploy, faster to take to market, um, it's easy to use and um, optimized to give you the lowest um, total cost of ownership and the maximum profitability for your business. Um, we've been doing this for something like 24 years now, um, something like 700,000 virtual data center environments run on Virtuoso software. Um, we have a global network of partners. Uh, so that's a mix of service provider partners and also um, distribution and channel partners. And we have about 300 people. And during that 24 years, uh, of innovation and software development um, have um, racked up a reasonably impressive number of technology patents. Um, kind of customers that run on Virtuoso, again, this is just a sample, um, but um, you will find Virtuoso under the hood at uh, traditional web hosting companies, at kind of cloud first, cloud service provider um, businesses, and in the enterprise as well. Um, that's a really quick overview. Today, we're really here to focus on VMware and a bit of context to the reasons why you want to migrate from VMware. I guess for most people here, nothing on the screen now is really a surprise. Um, it was about a year ago, um, Broadcom completed the acquisition of VMware and pretty quickly introduced some pretty sweeping changes, which caused some unhappiness and challenges for a lot of VMware customers um, who saw changes to product bundling and therefore pricing, um, big price increases. There were changes to the licensing model um, for companies in the service provider space. Um, the VCPP partner program changed fundamentally and many of those companies were simply ejected and required instead of having a direct relationship with VMware were effectively required to buy from now one of their competitors. And Collectively, all these things have just created a great deal of uncertainty, um, and not least because of um, historic behavior of companies like Broadcom um, when they acquire um, a big chunk of IP like this. Um, I don't think any of that's a surprise. Um, what is kind of interesting is looking at the timescales for migration from VMware. Um, again, about a year ago, 
you may be familiar with this um, number from Forrester. Um, they predicted one in five VMware customers would be leaving in 2024. Um, obviously, I'm not privy to the actual VMware customer numbers, but what we do know at Virtuoso is the pattern of increase in demand of companies coming to us looking for an alternative solution for their cloud. Um, and there's always general interest in um, any alternative software. If your IT manager, CTO, is part of your job to keep an eye on different options in the market. Um, but it was actually in 2023 that we started to see some interest from companies, especially in the service provider space, who kind of saw the storm that was coming and decided to make the switch early. Um, but obviously it was when the acquisition was completed and changes were announced, which was around Christmas last year, um, that um, there was a big spike in interest in alternatives. And that was from companies no longer able to participate in the partner program. Um, and also through our uh, channel partners, um, a lot of SMEs and the resellers that serve them um, looking urgently for a different solution. Now, it's an ongoing process. Um, the kind of media stories we saw uh, a year ago seem to have died down, but the problem hasn't gone away. And actually it's because companies are, like some companies were in a position to make the change quite quickly. Um, but a lot of companies are still considering their plans. Um, they are trying to work out how to um, uh, deal with what contract terms they have left. They're trying to work out if they can combine a um, migration with um, an upcoming hardware refresh that they may have planned already. Um, and it's really a pattern, not necessarily of immediate migration, but of kind of a incremental migration um, and looking at what workloads they can move now and um, complement their existing um, environment with um, a, an alternative platform. And then over the next one, two, three years to, um, um, uh, to make a, a permanent switch. When they come to Virtuoso, what's the solution we offer them? Um, our alternative to VMware is called uh, Virtuoso Hybrid Infrastructure. Um, it's a complete end-to-end -end cloud platform. It's built on OpenStack, um, but we take the core of OpenStack and um, create like a package streamlined solution um, that's easy to deploy, easy to manage, and we build in the maintenance and support. It's a single alternative to a lot of VMware products, by replacing vSphere, vSAN, NSX, Tanzu, VCD, and combining the open source basis with um, our different licensing structure, um, it's typically 25% um, less expensive to run for customers than the VMware stack. Customers use Virtuoso for um, private cloud, for public cloud. Um, we talked about the licensing. We offer um, not just subscription-based, but also perpetual options. And our partner program is designed to be inclusive with support from Virtuoso and from um, our channel partners around the world. So that's a super quick introduction. Yeah. Um, Dennis, yeah. we know yeah, why, sure, we sure. know when, we know what. So um, let's move on to how. Yeah, so actually uh, just to continue what Steve was referring to, uh, I mean, you mentioned that uh, Virtuoso has been in the cloud business for 24 years, right? That's that's older than some cloud engineers we have on the team around these days. And I work, I worked for Virtuoso uh, for over two years, a little over two years, but interestingly, initially I joined Parallels in 2010, it's like 14 years ago. That was an original umbrella uh, for a multitude of awesome technologies that uh, that was honestly and it was honestly my first job in the in the, in the IT and uh, I joined as a junior support engineer obviously and it was Parallels Virtuoso Containers 3.5 something and uh, we've been at the source of the container technology and contributors to the open source technologies like OpenVZ and later KVM I, th I think actually we're now a top three code contributors to KVM still. Yeah. So anyways, when we talk about virtual hybrid infrastructure, we're not talking about just another platform, right? So it's a fully packaged open stack based solution. Yes, but it integrates decades of innovation, like the virtual storage, virtual KVM and the slick UI on top of that. So, you know, including admin control panel and self-service portal, but 
actually all of that is not uh, is not my point what, what i'm trying to get to here is virtuoso is not a product company it is a solution solutions company and uh, as you understand a uh, big part of being a solution company is about having a comprehensive portfolio of services that cover customer lifecycle and ideally right so uh, the migration services that we're going to do, talk about today is a part of that quite diverse professional services portfolio and uh, looking at this slide i can tell you that day and night we're answering customers questions like this one so how to migrate from vmware and is there a magic button for that uh, but but let's pause here for a second right so I don't know, Steve, what's your take? What's the biggest challenge about the migration overall and the, and the um, VMware in particular? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we, we, we obviously get all kinds of questions all the time. And, you know, there are a lot of, um, you know, uh, technical questions, questions about the, compl the technical complexity of migration. But um, I kind of get the sense that it's more really about it's like the fundamental challenge of having to move away from a platform which is is like the basis of your business right um it's fundamental yeah. to your it it's fundamental to the cloud services you offer um so it's, it's it's more about it's more about the soft stuff it's about skills it's about budget it's about you know um how do i actually do this as 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 a team and as a business no absolutely that's that's very much true and uh, how i see it, uh, the the cloud technology itself is a complex machinery in the first place, right? It was created as a, as an evolution of the most comprehensive IT accomplishments, you know, we, we used to have. And, but now imagine an organization that is living in their cloud for a, you know, 10 to 15 years, and they probably have their customer base. They have built tons of integrations. They figured out a billing process and overall organizational processes are fine tuned to their existing technology. So, and now you have to take all that build another cloud universe, which is again, a complex masterpiece, right? But this time with, with its own physics and laws and, and whatnot. And then you have to move over while trying not to introduce any interruptions to your business or, and to your customers, right? So, uh, you know, no folks, sorry to break your hearts, but there is no migrate now magic button for you. And my team would be sipping margaritas if that was the case, but we're busy. Honestly, migrations are hands down number one uh, projects now that we have in the professional services that we're working on right now. And uh, if we actually uh, switch to the next slide, you will see that this is one interesting task to migrate, right? There is no surprise. Uh, companies, especially those who were forced to migrate from VMware are now facing quite a challenge and sometimes are hesitant to move. So, my take is that in, in the biggest challenge in VMware's case for a lot of companies is this this whole conversation is not about is not part of the strategy. The, the task itself is not a strategic conversation. So a lot of customers are forced to react on the changes introduced for them. And uh, depending on when is their renewal uh, on the on the timeline, now they probably have very little time to answer quite significant questions about their new reality. So our new cloud, what uh, what will it look like? What does it have to offer? How will it be tied to our you know, existing reality? Whom can I trust to plan and build it for us if I don't have enough expertise? What about the commercials, for example? It was never in our budgets. That's you know, one of the questions to solve. Uh, is it some in-house uh, unique platform that nobody knows about, or I can easily find the technical force to maintain this new cloud even after the migration? Uh, and well, will I ever need the technical, will I even need a technical team or I can offload this uh, a certain headaches to 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 a partner. So this is just a part of the stress that we're seeing now with customers coming from VMware. Uh, but probably the main question is, even if we build the cloud, so how do I get there my stuff? And here a lot of customers find themselves not having enough expertise or the tools or the processes to do that. And uh, we in Virtuoso are trying to address those challenges. If we switch over to the next slide, we can see how. So we have uh, Virtuoso migration services. The first step, we, uh, we're trying to make sure that it's not just a technical conversation. So what we do is we try to sit down with customers and talk about the bigger picture. So your biggest business goals, your challenges, and uh, how can we map solutions to, 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 to fit, right? The slide that Steve uh, has shown earlier uh, with the VHI overview, there is a number of aspects that we can discuss together. There is just platform as a service, you know, infrastructure as a service uh, solutions and whatnot. So, after we figure out point B, our destination, we obviously need to find a way how to get there. And for that, we have a number of tools uh, and approaches available. 
like, for example, I don't know, war, war migration, cold migration. You know, if you have limited resources, we have gradual capacity reallocation and so on. So we've got the tools and strategies to work. And we have a special migration service called Migration Blueprint that our customers are uh, successfully using, I think, for a number of year, years already. And it consists of three big phases uh, that, that covers the migration end to end. So if we take a look at the next slide, we will see them. Uh, here's an overview of those phases. Uh, we will talk about uh, them in details in a second, but here, as you can see, this is basically an analysis uh, of point A. This is where we're at. Uh, phase two is about planning of point B and where we need to arrive and how do we get there. And phase three is obviously getting there, the, the execution. Now let's uh, let's see uh, phases in in details, right? So in the first play, in the first phase, we talk to the tech and the business teams to understand objectives. Like, what are you trying to achieve with the migration? Is, is the goal just to save your existing workloads and create a similarly sized environment, or you plan to grow and we can jointly figure out how can we build a platform that that scales with with your business and is aligned with your uh, midterm, long term plans? So, what would be the preferred migration strategy, for example? Do you have workloads that can be migrated offline? Do you have multiple environments that have, uh, you know, have certain requirements to move in sequence? Uh, do you have any integrations planned for the future setup? Uh, what's your backup strategy? You know, DR and so on. So, all of that is a part of the conversation. And uh, I, I always say, success in any projects come, you know, comes down to one question we often often forget. Honestly, how will I know this is successful? So uh, we uh, normally speak about why do I need to do it, but how do I know that I've done this correctly and I get there where I want it is actually an important question that that uh, it can solve a lot of problems for you. So in the context of migration, it should go even beyond just the technical uh, question. How will you know that your overall transition is a success? So what are those checklist kind of items that you absolutely have to have in place? To consider this uh, accomplished right so this is the phase phase one and uh, if we switch to phase two uh, phase two is based on the outcomes of the previous phase obviously we design and plan the destination platform and uh, the the right ways to, to get there so our professional services team deploys and pre-configures everything for the successful migration we choose the tools with you based on the uh, scenarios that are acceptable and approaches that are acceptable to you we configure them and uh, last but not least, we create a plan for the migration in phases and document everything for you. Uh, obviously, the goal for this phase is to make sure that everything is in place before the last phase three of execution. So that's why we always remind our customers to, you know, there are certain considerations that you, you, you need to take care of, like you know, network connectivity between the source and target environments, network bandwidth, appliance networks, management networks, IP ports, you know, accessibility, all of those little things may impact the results of the migration in one way or another. We actually recently introduced a uh, migration guide, right, that published on the website that uh, high level, uh, on a high level, tries to explain the, the phases and includes certain considera considerations that you guys may want to have in place uh, in your mind uh, while planning this exercise. So once everything is set up uh, right, we do a dry run, dry run of test VMs. And this logically completes the preparation, right? And allows us to make sure that all the scenarios are covered and there are no issues. So after that, we provide your technical teams with a training session, potentially based on those dry runs and tailored documentation on the process for the, for the migration. So once this is sorted out, we move to the phase three, uh, uh, the, to the execution. And uh, well, don't kill me if I say this is probably the smallest part of the migration. I mean, in regards to the mental efforts, right? So if you have your platforms ready, if you have your teams enabled, if you have your processes figured out, you just need to follow the process, right? And, and normally, yes, uh, well, with, with the prep done right, this will go quite smooth. But to prevent issues, we will keep hand-holding the customer throughout the whole process. This is also part of the service. And for that, we create a dedicated communication channels like Slack, Teams, you know, Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, anything goes. But and, and now on our side, we actually collaborate with which also technical support team to provide priority support for the for the during the migration, right? And our support team is actually twenty four seven, so you know we won't feel alone. Uh, another aspects of uh, aspect of this stage is the um, downtime and uh, maintenance windows planning with end users. 
So customers normally choose when to perform migrations and make the necessary arrangements with their users, users uh, based on business needs. And with, what we've seen is that it's much more effective when a customer handles this directly rather than making you know a third party company to connect to, to, to the end users directly. Um, so our project managers and uh, ma migration man engineers will be working during the project all the time. So we'll have regular checkpoints until the migrations very end, right? So that was a, uh, I think that's enough for the three phases. So there was a high level overview of the migration process. Now let's talk uh, about the uh, types of migration and the tools that, that we may use. And actually, before we go there, Steve, you, I remember you mentioned there were questions on, on Reddit or somewhere. What's the most popular one around the types of migration that we have seen? Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, you know, obviously a lot of questions asking, you know, what what kind of downtime can I expect? Um, and then pretty much followed up with, um, is it possible to do live migration of VMs um, from VMware to, well, not just, just to Virtuoso, but to OpenStack to anything, right? So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, well, let me try to address it here. So, in simple words, live migration is only possible. Actually, we can switch to the next slide to to uh, to have a picture, right? Live migration is only possible within similar platforms, like you know, OpenStack to OpenStack or VMware to VMware. If you migrate uh, VMware, or if you migrate VM between platforms with similar hypervisors and formats of images, then yes, it is totally possible. But essentially, uh, any migration from the VMware will involve a different different type of hypervisor and the VM image format, right? So that's why you don't see live migration on the screen at all. Those are warm migration and cold migration are, are two types that we uh, work with uh, most often, right? So, and warm migration is about transferring the virtual machine while it remains online. So this is essentially a two-step process. First of all, you replicate the data from source to target. And now, while this transfer uh, was happening, your VM one source was online, right? So that means there might be some changes to the data introduced, right? So what do you do? You perform an incremental backup to keep the data integrity. If if your VM was heavily loaded, there might be some changes even during the incremental backup. So you do another one, right? So, and after everything is settled and the transfer is done, you perform a something called cutover to, to the destination platform. So you shut down the source VM, uh, you uh, boot up, you create and boot up the destination VM and, uh, and that's it. And our Modern migration tools allow those two, two stages, replication and cutover, to be separated, uh, which means you can replicate your data during one time frame and then perform a switch over at some different time. So uh, obviously, warm migration is typically preferred for minimizing the downtime, right? And another type of migration we have here is the cold migration. It's about VMs being transferred while uh, they are offline. So surprisingly, this flow has a long list of benefits, actually, from data integrity to being almost platform agnostic. For example, it is often necessary when the source VM has compatibility issues like outdated OS and bootloaders, or the VM is under heavy load, uh, like in the previous example. And overall, this flow is actually faster, less complex. It's more secure because there are less risky points in this whole process, but obviously suitable when the downtime is acceptable. Right, so this is the overview of the types, and we can move to the migration tools that we use. Uh, that we, you know, over time in in virtual the professional services, we we gained experience with multiple migration tools. We performed migrations with Highstacks, with uh, Virtu2V. We worked with CloudAny, and our portfolio now uh, matured over time. And current list of top performing solutions includes Coriolis as the most comprehensive tool, Acronis as a go-to solution for a backup restore type of migration, and obviously Virtu2V for cold migrations where were applicable. But if a customer has any preference or is already familiar with some particular tools uh, from this list, we can easily deploy it and configure for the migration. So uh, the, the thing is that we know these solutions, we work with them in why, one way or another. So we can prepare your platform no matter what tool that you're, you're planning to, to, to use, right? So that's totally possible. The difference would be that for example, in case of high stacks or cloud, any customers will have to engage with those vendors directly and uh, sort out the commercials and technical support from those vendors uh, uh, directly. While in the case of uh, Coriolis and Acronis, customers will have a one-stop shop uh, at Virtuoso, right? So you, you can go directly through Virtuoso, which means we will be the single point of contact for you covering the migrations end-to-end, uh, -end, including you know, technical support and also the commercial. So we have some special partnership terms with those companies. So the, there is a lot of uh, 
other benefits with this with this approach. So, what's your take, Steve? Uh, should we move to the uh, customer cases, right? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I, I was going to ask Dennis. Do you, I mean, obviously, everything you talked about is this is part of the these decisions get made during the um, the scoping process, right? The planning process for the migration. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Do we have? Can, can we put like a rough time scale on the planning phases themselves? It, does it just totally vary depending on you know the customer environment, um, the kind of business, the stakeholders that need to be involved? I mean, how how does that work? Yeah, so that's obviously a combination of, uh, well, in VMware's case, I would say that's the business factor that comes into play mostly, right? Because if if you have your renewal coming up in one, two, three, four months, right? Again, uh, this is not part of your strategy. So you have to be very fast reacting on something very impactful and you don't have too much time to to uh, to, to plan, right? So you have to accelerate in, in all those decisions. So in that case, you will see actually one of the, uh, case uh, cases that we're going to sh show later, uh, we have a customer who managed to migrate like 500 VMs over the course of a month, right? While normally, uh, well, not normally, but in some cases, even smaller amount of VMs can take, you know, two, three, four months to, to migrate just because of the time pressure, the preferences and end users arrangements that, that customers are going with. So that, that sort of stuff. Cool. Okay. Should we look at some examples of migration projects? Absolutely. Yeah. So we have uh, four cases. Yeah. And actually th this one is the cloud and IT services uh, provider from Austria that was looking for a platform consolidation and found uh, virtual hybrid infrastructure as a, as a go-to solution for that, uh, for VMware workloads and for, uh, for some legacy workloads. Hystex was a, uh, we, so we did the regular migration blueprint and the tool of choice was Hystex. So we moved uh, uh, around 100 VMs in about 60 days end to end, and uh, actually answering your question. So 60 days is not the phase three of execution. It's basically for all the three stages here, right? Um, next one, we have a uh, managed IT services provider from New Zealand. Again, a platform consolidation for VMware and legacy workloads on VHI and uh, uh, virtual application platform actually was one of the uh, solutions the, uh, uh, the, of, the cho of their choice, which is our application centric platform as a service solution with automated application deployments and CI CD and, and other stuff. And the legacy part was uh, moved in uh, two weeks while the VMware part is still in progress. So Acronis and Coriolis are the tools that, uh, that we're using here. Yep, moving on. This is the uh, actually the very technical cloud provider from Finland. They were looking for full VMware swap out in a short time frame due to VCPP changes. And these guys had an awesome technical team with really extensive knowledge. And it was clear from day one they will be managing the migration themselves, uh, but with virtuoso consultancy, mainly around the destination planning, the, you know, the platform architecture, hardware reviews, platform audits, health checks, the, that sort of service. And as a result, they migrated 500 VMs in 30 days. And VHI is now uh, their number one production platform. All right. Um, yeah, and this is a public cloud provider from Europe with, uh, again, platform consolidation of uh, uh, VMware and legacy workloads, 100 v uh, 120 VMs. There is no time pressure for them. This is one of the examples that uh, actually this may span across multiple months, right? And it's not just uh, the... It's not something that, uh, well, this is up to customer, right? So how fast to move here? Th there is no time pressure. So legacy platform is planned to be switched off in December and the VMware is going to follow next. So Coriolis was tested and will be a tool of choice for the VMware part, while the custom tooling that we created for the legacy platform uh, is a uh, solution to migrate legacy workloads, right? So yeah, that's, uh, that's the uh, four cases that I wanted to review with you guys. If we, if we actually move over to the next slide. Uh, well, yeah, that's actually the last one, right? So the takeaways, what, what are the takeaways? Uh, first of all, migrating from VMware isn't about hitting a button and calling it a day, right? I hope that's clear. So it's, uh, it's a strategic shift that takes planning, that takes preparation and the right, I would say it takes the right expertise and the right partners by your side, because as always, the question is not what to do, but the question is, who is going to do it? You, you know, the, 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 the team knowledge, expertise, platform management, maintenance, migrating workloads. This is not the question whether to do it or not. The real question is, who is going to do it? Are you able to do it yourself? 
or you need someone to help you with certain stages, right? And migrations between different clouds are inevitably complex projects. And uh, and as you have seen, we have in virtual we helped companies to make this transition successfully, probably thanks to the fact that we're not looking at the migration as a standalone service of moving workloads. So we have a full range of services, as you can see on the screen, and it's about you know multiple things. It's about proper discovery, helping customers to understand what they actually need, uh, then onboarding them, training the teams, uh, and then helping them. So we have, for example, like the virtual university with all kinds of trainings for the, about the products and technologies that we have, right? So there is a lot of hidden synergies, I would say, out there. And that's the biggest thing uh, we, we have, I'd say, in my view. So I hope... Uh, I hope this uh, this was uh, this webinar gives you guys the confidence to embark on your own migration journey, be it with virtuals or not. I hope you will have a bit more understanding now on the process and potential ways forward. Uh, I think it's time uh, to open the floor for questions, Steve. Right? What, what's your take? Yeah, sounds good. And I think um, yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's clear for, for for a mere marketing person like me, right? I clearly don't have a deep understanding of the technology, um, but. Um, you know, it, it's clear that it's it isn't just a product to product migration. It's about moving from uh, vendor to vendor, and one kind of relationship to a better kind of relationship. And part of that is the the life cycle and the services that we offer. Um, we've seen some examples of customers that have taken full advantage of you know most of the services here. Some companies have the in house expertise and the resources to do some of this themselves, and that's equally fine, right? It's whatever works for your business, whatever works for your business case. Um, all right. Let's um, move yeah. to Q and A um, while we're just checking questions that have come in whilst we've been talking. Um, yeah, the links so here can, are can... yeah, just ahead. just just starting points on the website, right? I'll mention this now because I had a few questions from people that are clearly looking at Virtualizer perhaps for the first time. Where can I find more solution information? How does the architecture compare to VMware? Can I try it? Um, visit the website. Um, there's plenty of information there to guide you and to at least get you started. Um, there are different ways for you to actually try Virtuoso hybrid infrastructure. Um, um, there are demos you can watch, but there are trials you can take. Um, but when it comes to like specifics of your migration project, you know, I would urge you to um, just get in touch with us via the website. We'll drop you an email after this webinar as well um, with, with ways you can find out more. But let's get talking. We can put you in touch with the um, amazing pre-sales migration people on Dennis's team and um, and really get into the the detail of what you're you know what you're looking for what your business actually needs and what kind of migration uh, strategy and plan would suit you best because I think that's what we've really been talking about right we can't show you how migration works but we can show yeah. you the framework the blueprint um, for the approach that we take with you to to make it successful yeah um, yeah we had another one uh, from the pre registration part right so uh, the question was uh, around migration of RDM based VMs to Virtuoso all tolerant DCDR strategy and uh, actually we will need to get back to you offline on that because we will need to clarify the RDM part in the first place so is it the raw device mapping or it's the remote desktop uh, management story uh, one way or another we, we can clarify this and one uh, one question in the Q&A part so what kind of firewalls support it what about the integrations with firewalls and uh, just to read them out loud, as long as the virtual firewall appliances support KVM, then they can be run within VHI. VHI is virtual hybrid infrastructure. So the network will be configured so that tenant VMs use this appliance as default gateway and all other access uh, to the outside will be disabled. So we have customer using, uh, using a wide variety of firewall appliances. Okay, awesome. Any other questions? Yeah, I can see we're, lots of questions have been um, uh, have been typed into chat, and um, um, the guys have been responding to them as we go along. Um, awesome. Okay. It's a question about actually a couple of questions. Somebody asking, "What do we mean by X as a service?" So yeah, anything as a service or everything as a service. Um, and uh, there's another question about whether with virtualized hybrid infrastructure you can handle Kubernetes stuff. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, um, it's an industry standard Kubernetes um, implementation. Um, 
um, you do that stuff in the same way with the same um, provisioning tools, the same UI, the same metering billing tools as you would for virtual machines. Uh, it's all part of the platform. Yeah. Can we engage Virtuoso to migrate our servers from VMware to VHA for us? We have approximately 150 virtual servers running in a mix of Windows and Linux. Absolutely, yes. I think I even uh, know uh, where does it uh, come, where is it coming from, right? I think Nicole will will get back to you, Jordan, on that really soon. And uh, yeah, I think we have something. Certainly. Um, what else? Um, what firewalls do you natively support? Uh, and the question, the answer is OpenStack includes firewall natively. Security policy, policies, some customers use third-party firewall appliances, but they are not integrated. Okay. Okay. No, I'm really in the, in the very beginning of the chat uh, history. There's a question here about, are, are you seeing requests for data to return to customers on premises environments, which I guess is not necessarily migration specific but um it's kind of interesting there's obviously a lot of a lot of talk um, funnily enough from vmware right about repatriation um mm -hmm. and yeah to a certain extent i think that's probably true um companies got to deal with a lot of issues not just things like the cost of public cloud but data sovereignty changing legislation all kinds of reasons why you might want to bring your workloads um back on premises um at the same time the world is full of cloud service providers running Virtuoso software. And again, because of the, um, the, the the very different cost basis that I kind of talked quickly about at the beginning, they are able to offer a, a, a significantly um, less expensive, better supported local sovereign cloud service in pretty much any country you can think of as there's, there's gonna be a provider that's close to you. Um, but at the same time, the Virtuoso software stack is ideal for um, on-premises, um, private cloud, um, not just public cloud. Um, so both options mm -hmm. are possible. Again, it's, it's really it's really down to the business use case and what you need. Yep. There is a question around Proxmox migration. Uh, as I understand, Proxmox and OpenStack share the image format, right? So it's a matter of, uh, you know, moving that. But uh, Acronis is, is definitely a, an option here. So, but let's uh, let's take it offline. Yeah, I'm seeing lots of fairly technical questions, um, which I'm I know we're trying we're trying to address some of them in chat. Um, if we haven't got to your question, if we haven't gone into the issue in uh, as much detail as you perhaps would like on this session, um, yeah, for sure we'll get back to you um, individually afterwards and. Um, get you all the information um, you need. Um, we're at about 40 minutes now, I think. Um, so I know questions are still coming in, um, but I think we're gonna wrap it up there. Um, I would like to thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for the guys on your team. Um, especially thank you to everybody watching. Um, please do visit the website links here. Um, you can come direct to Virtuoso. If you're here as a guest of one of our distribution partners, thank you also so much for, for coming. Um, please get in touch with your local, um, your local distro, your local reseller, um, if that's an easier way for you to um, learn more. And yeah, um, we'd be very awesome. happy to explore um, helping you with your migration project, whether you're, whether you're looking at you know three months, six months, 18 months, um, let's start talking. And um, we hope that we can provide you with a much more flexible and uh, cost-effective alternative to the VMware stuff you've probably been used to. Yep. That's Thank it. you very much, guys. Thank Thanks, you. everyone.